We thank God for each of you being here. Amen. You are alive to tell the story. Amen. 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 Make most of the opportunity that you have in this season Amen. to serve God. Amen. You know, I think about this 24-year-old young man mm -hmm. just crossing the street and get hit by a truck. Life is snuffed out just that quickly. Make most of the times that you have. Amen. But these times will never come again. You can't step in the same place in the stream twice. Because when you step in and you pick your feet out, that water that you stepped in is gone. So take advantage of this. Take advantage of the word that you're hearing. Dare to be different. Amen. Don't, don't go with the crowd. Dare to be different. Amen. We honor the spirit of Christ today. We honor the ministry that's in the house. Pastor Tanya and all the ministry. And every one of you that have assembled today. Good to see those that were out last week. Amen. Appreciate you being here. But I want to continue this message and I want to peel this onion back just a little bit more. Talking about my nourishment with the title, but it really summarizes the heart of God as it pertains to his people. And I saw some things over the weekend in this study that really just mesmerized me. And I want to make sure I I'll get there to that at some point. But we remember the scene where Jesus had just left off talking. And his disciples show up. Amen. They say, they saw him talking to the woman, the Samaritan woman I'm talking about. And they come and say, Master, eat. And he has a response that I think baffled them because the Samaritan woman was thinking of natural water. Here, his disciples are thinking of natural food. But the Lord has something else in mind. And he said to them, but in verse 32 of John 4, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. He says, right now, you have no idea what sustains me. What drives me. What motivates me. Even through the suffering when I don't feel like going any further down the road. He said, this is the one thing that drives me. My meat, he says, I have that you know not of. And then verse 33, therefore said the disciples, one, uh, 33 rather, therefore said the disciples one to another, had any man brought him off to eat? Verse 34, Jesus said unto them, my meat, my meat, Nourishment is to do the will of him that sent me. Now please can underscore this next part. He said, and to finish his work. And we're going to see that he makes mention of this verse right here. He makes mention of the end result of what he just told his disciples. Remember what he said? He said, my meat is to do his will and to finish. Oh my God. To finish what God started. 
And God started his work back in Genesis. He started the salvation plan in Genesis. When did God start it? The moment he slew the lamb to cover Adam, he started that salvation process. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When Adam tried to cover himself, he, he couldn't do it. Amen. So God clothed him in skin. Well, it cost something is life to cover it. Oh, hallelujah. Salvation, the salvation plan of God started way back then. And Jesus said, I'll come to finish it. Not my word. But he is. And then he goes on to say, let me go to, I want to read verse 34 in the Amplified Version, because I want to get down the road with this. Jesus said to them, my food, my nourishment is to do the will or pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. Now you're gonna you're gonna hear me keep saying that the work that Jesus came to do is finished. That means you are finished. Oh come on, y'all gonna get rid of me here. I didn't say you were completely walking in the finished work, but you in God's eye are finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's still working something out. Listen, he is working out what he's done on the internal. He's working it out for people to see. But make no mistake about this thing. The work that Jesus came to do is finished. Come on, he don't need to come again to God to get you to another level. Come on, somebody. Come on, I know we got gold dust flying everywhere. And everybody excited about this gadget and that gadget. But Jesus said, I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> the only thing I commit myself to doing is interceding that you will come to full knowledge <laughs> of what I've done. Yeah. Are you with me, beloved? <laughs> well, hallelujah. Nourishment is defined. The food or other substances necessary for growth for health and good condition. For growth, for health and good condition. Any, any nourishment is first and foremost to help you grow. We're not growing in because it's something new. We're growing into something that's finished. Hallelujah. Come on, when you go about making a pair of shoes, do you really get the shoes the exact size that they are right then? If you do come talk to me, I need to educate you. <laughs> come on, but you go and buy them shoes. You buy them, listen, you buy the shoes in anticipation that they're going to grow. Oh, hallelujah. And all that God has done was in anticipation that you are going to grow into it. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to grow into the prophet that he called you to be. You're going to grow into the ministry of health that he called you into. But make no mistake, this is finished. You buy those shoes sizes bigger. Because you have a home. Yeah. Yeah. That they are going to grow. Yes. Y'all must have a long night out there. Oh, you yeah.
understand fully what he's done. Oh, hallelujah. Let, let me read this. Jesus said to them, my food, listen to the language, that which satisfies my strongest desire and it quenches, listen to that, it quenches all other desires. Yo, yo, religious folk, come on. Come on, you got other desires right now. You know, you, you want to do a lot of stuff. You got other desires. But Jesus said, it's all right to have those other desires. But the one desire that will let you will quench every other desire you got, and that is the food to do his will. Amen. Come on, you might want to go do certain things. You, you feel strongly about it. But when you drink of this one, it will quench the desire that you had to go do that other thing. Help them to see. He says, it is that I may do continuously, continuously, not intermittent. You know, to where it stalls sometimes. You feel good this week, so you do the will of God. Come on, everything went right for you this week, so you do the will of God. No, Jesus said, I do it continuously. Don't be one of these intermittent. Believers, that it can cause your, your your wife told you she loved you that we you feel good to serve God now. <laughs> because your husband told you you look good today or this week, you feel good about serving now, Mama Sheba. <laughs> It's not intermittent. It's not on an irregular basis. But he said, my food is to continually serve. Uh, come on, listen to this. Hebrews 10 and 7. That's not up there, but it was one of the notes I made. He said, Lord, I come to do thy will, O God. Was his motto. That was his burden that he bare every single day. My will, my desire is to do your pleasure. That was his burden. Come on, he says, for those of us that think we can, we're going to be in for a rude awakening. He said, man shall not live. By bread alone. Come on, you can't live by all those external things that are out there. He said, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. What is he trying to communicate? That's your nourishment. When all else fail, when everybody else fail, he said, the one thing that's continuous, the one thing that's constant is the word that has been sent to sustain you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm just, I'm in the review phase, so stay with me. Amen. 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 The next slide, slide 11 says this, and I want to make a note of that. I want you to see this. The doing of the will of God is a perpetual activity. That means, uh, again, like Jesus says, it's continuous. Amen. Serving him is continuous, not intermittent. Everything about him was continually serving. Every single day, I serve, even when I don't feel like it, especially when it's raining outside and I don't want to move. I serve. God is good, and, and because you serve Him, He knows what's important to you. That's right. 
You cannot. Y'all hear me say this all the time. You know, at least over the years, I say, y'all seem to go on vacation every summer. I ain't talking about going on a cruiser, but from serving. I said, what is it about y'all during the summer mm -hmm. when your pattern changes? Mm -hmm. That's intermittent, irregular. Mm -hmm. You must be resolved that your meat is to do his will. Uh, your meat is not based upon whether things go right in your house. If that's how well you're serving God, you won't get there. Amen. Husband don't go, you don't go. Wife don't go, you don't go. Come on now. When serving God is an individual choice. Amen. Perpetual. Mm -hmm. Constant. See, some people need a charm to serve God. Those things I just mentioned, they're charms. You need a charm because that's an immature stage. Come on, you need folk spin all on the floor. You need that. That keeps you motivated. That's childish. Do you know God will let you see people rolling all on the floor? He'll let you see that stuff until the time of pointing. Mm -hmm. When there's an expectation of growth, you won't see nobody rolling anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, John 9, I think it's slide 13 up there. I want to read verse 3 and 4. Jesus answered, Neither have this man seen y'all know that he brought a man in and how he was his condition. They blamed it on his parents. But Jesus said, neither has this man said, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Every condition that exists out here now is there for the works of God to be made manifest. All right. For the works of God to be to come forth through somebody that's ready to serve God on a continuous basis. God is ready to do what man can't do. All right. I want to give you a brief story real quick to show you how God's hand is when you serve him continually. Mm -hmm. When my dad had all this property, my dad had this property, and, and it was lost. And I said, my God, this cannot be. I honored my dad, and, but there were some decisions made that, that caused the property to be, to, to be lost. The line had stopped. Mm -hmm. And I kept believing. I said, God, it cannot. His line cannot end this way. Mm -hmm. And one day, my wife and I was home. I get a call. The tax people called and said, Mr. Fisher. So your dad still got property here. Say, listen, I know there was some stuff that went on with this whole big piece, but the piece that I grew up on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is still there. Praise God. I said, what? They said, yes, the property. The property that me and my brothers grew up on, it was still there untouched. And the tax people, I don't know how they got a hold of me. Told me what I had to do. I went, did it. And I looked at 
God, I say, I thank you Amen. for preserving his legacy. Amen. That it wasn't lost that way. Amen. Why did God do that? Because it was a concern of mine. Amen. And because I set my love on him. Oh, can I get a witness today? Hallelujah. Because I set my love on God. God set his love on me. And he knew that was important to me. And he brought it right back to the eldest son. You think that was my coincidence? We must work the works of God while it is day. Darkness comes. Come on, let's listen to verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. While I have the activity of my limb, while I can still see, while I can still hear, I must work the works of him because darkness will come. He said, night coming when no man can work. Come on, y'all hear me today. Beloved, if you don't praise God, why your legs still strong enough? Come on, why, why, why you can still get up off your blessed assurance? Every time it's time to praise God, you need to get up on your feet and give God glory. I'm not talking about necessarily here. Because when night comes, oh hallelujah, no man can work. Resolve to give God all you got right now. Now hear me. I'm gonna go to John 17, slide 14. Listen, remember what I said in the beginning. He says. He said, I come to finish. I come to finish. And here, he closed the book to me. He says, as he was praying in John 17, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have what? Finished. Oh, hallelujah. Can we say that today? That God called us into something and we finished it? He said, I glorified your name on the earth and I finished the work which you gave me to do. Amen. Come on. Jesus didn't say, I got it halfway and I'm going to give it to the church to finish. No. He said, I finished what you gave me to do. Amen. And that what did God give me to do? He said, go and prepare a way so every man, woman, boy, and girl can come back to me. Amen. Go open the door of salvation. I open the door in Genesis. Go finish it. I have finished the work you gave me to do. No regrets. No wonder if I would have turned left when I turned right. I have finished. gave me to do. That's where I am, beloved. I, in my life right now, I just want to do what he called me to do. Amen. And I want to, I want to be focused on it every single day of my life. Because night comes. No man can work. I don't want to live with any regrets and say, I wish I had I want to commit my way to the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures of late, the more I get into knowing the Lord, is Psalm 32 and 8. And I know that's not part of it, but you can look at it when you can. And this is what David, the Lord said. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that you should go. Then he says this at the end of that verse. I will guide you by my own eye. 
When I caught hold of that revelation, oh my God, that's, that's part of me every single day. Lord, instruct and teach me the way I should go. Guide me by what you see. Come on. Guide me by your eye, Lord. Let, 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 me, let me go down the path that you see for me. Every single day. Our priorities as a people are so mixed up. We've got to re we got to reset. We got to we got to adjust. If Jesus said it was His meat, His nourishment, that was the one thing that 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 desire was so strong. When there was a desire in Him to quit, that that, that overrode that desire to quit. It was so strong. And that's what I want for me. I want that will to, of God in my heart to be so strong that when I have those other desires, it would just drown them out. Amen. Because if Jesus said that, 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 that he had other desires but the will of God increased it, Amen. we're going to have other desires. Amen. But will your nourishment be to fulfill that desire or to stay on course with God. Hallelujah. Oh, let me, let me, we try to get somewhere. Paul says, when I was a child, I did those things as a child. But when I became a man, I put away. Notice what he said now. He was very deliberate. He said, I put them away. I made a choice to put away childish things. What was, what was he saying? I didn't need them anymore. You must grow up in a place in God to where you don't need those childish things to continue. Whether somebody ever talked to you or not, it won't impact your relationship to him. Come on, amen. 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 If they speak, fine. If they don't, pray the Lord. Come on. If, if, if they visit you or they call me, fine. But if they don't, it's all right. Why? Because I'm resolved in my heart that my meat is to do his will. And if I do it his will, I'm rejected. So be it. I trust it now. Yeah. 
Come on, it's, it's like you can't trust a gun you never shot before. Because you don't have a feel for it. But David says, the lion and the bear went down. Say, listen, this unclean pagan, he's going down because what I remember. So you're telling me y'all don't have a lion in a bear experience in your life? Well, you still chasing? Come on, stop. Yes, you got a lion in bear experience. You just don't recall that. Yes, sir. Amen. You got one. Amen. But in chasing all this other new stuff, you've forgotten it. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right, y'all. Maybe they're a little too late me. You're still searching for something for God to prove himself to you. You know that's child's play. <laughs> See, that's what Saul then was doing. They would say, I don't need nothing else. Okay, no. He going down. But he said, but you're not big enough. But the lion came too. He went down. Amen. 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 Go with me to John chapter 4. I want to share a revelation here with you that I hope will settle you in understanding what the will of the Lord is. Verse 35 says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and the harv then cometh harvest. He said, Don't you say that? He said, You say four months and then harvest comes. He said, Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes. And look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Now y'all can please hear me. As I was sitting there, the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. And I said, oh my goodness, how did this elude us so long? God never called the church to go and plant a harvest. All right, man. All right. But this is what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. This is why we have so many programs. We need it because we think we're planning something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he never sent the church to go and plant so that something could come up. He said, no, no, no. He said, I call the church not to plant a harvest but to go get it. Amen. God listening to me. He said, God has already done the work. The harvest. Listen, he said, I've already planted the crop. Go and get it. He said, the harvest is already there. Come on, Jeff, you're a farmer. If the harvest is there, you don't need to plant. Guess where all the work went into? It went into planting. Because it was so much work. Oh, 
He said, go get the harvest. We still try to plant the harvest. Come on, that's what we've been doing. Myself included, that's what we've done over the years. This is why we have so many things going on. Because we think that's the way to plant God in people. Do you know right now, if I were to tell you, that every woman, boy, girl, ever born has enough God already there. Amen. Amen. He said, I didn't ask you to go plant me in there. Amen. That's right. Y'all look at me. Amen. He said, I asked you to go bring the harvest in. The harvest is there. I 
has sent you forth to reap. What does that mean? What does that mean? Hallelujah. Let me read. Go to slide 20. He says in Matthew 9. Then said he, in verse 37, unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. Notice why he keeps communicating. And it eluded me for years. He keeps saying the harvest is grown up. Uh -huh. It's right. It's right. He said, but the laborers, or you could put it for it to see the reapers are few. We've been beguiled and working on a plan that was not in his plan. He says, pray ye therefore the Lord of what? The harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We're talking about the fields. The, the world is his harvest. Now how do we reap harvest? I'm going to read the next couple verses. I'm going to let you go. Right. Daniel chapter 12. All right. uh, when you get this set up in your spirit, you can then zero in on your actions. That you're not trying to plan anything. You hear me what I'm saying now when you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for as a harvest is concerned. You don't have to do anything to bring that harvest and make it ready. He said it's already there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Digest it. Pray about it. The actions of a sower and a reaper are two different okay. actions. <laughs> Daniel 12 and 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Listen now. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. This is reaping. When you turn one to righteousness. That should always be our goal is to turn a person to righteousness. Not trying to entertain anyone. Living a life before them and speaking the words of life that Jesus has already communicated. Amen. And understand that wherever you go, you're there to reap a harvest. Let me tell you what our problem is. We church too much. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The only time you feel saved is you in service. In some type of church function. He never told us to go. Hear me. The harvest is not in the church. It's not. He, you are not the harvest. Guess what? Somewhere down the line, you were already reaped. Amen. I don't need to try to read you. I need to be out where the fields are white. That's the harvest. Tell me. Let me get out there where the harvest is right and pray that I have the right, the right word to speak to that one that will turn to righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. What have I done? I've just read the harvest. 
You know we sing this song. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And we rejoice <laughs> today. No, he said, there's a harvest I had. I want you to go get that harvest. Yeah. 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 You still talk about taking back by the devil stole from you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not saying you don't want to get those things back, but that's not harvest. Amen. <laughs> You know we sing that song every day. Now don't y'all stop singing it now. <laughs> you just sing it now with a great awareness. Yeah. 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 Sing it while he's going to get the harvest. While I'm going to get the harvest. Bring it in the harvest. See what you're shaking in. <laughs> My job is not to sit here and make you religious. That's right. My job is to help you mature in knowledge now. Amen. To grow in the knowledge of Christ. Amen. To understand what His will is. Amen. Acts 26. <laughs> I love y'all. Amen. I love you to speak truth to me. Hallelujah. Acts 26. Listen, listen to the language here. And what God was speaking to this apostle was about reaping. He says, deliver me from the people. And from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Listen what it says. To open their eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. That's reaping. Reaping has everything to do with the field. And bringing that in. That's the harvest of God. So that they will have an inheritance among them that are already reaped. I'm bringing that down for you. Those that have already been reaped, they can have an inheritance among them that are already sanctified. Amen. So everything that we are geared to, listen, when you come here, you come here to receive instruction, Amen. to grow. Amen. We don't need another religion story. That's right. That's right. We don't need more traditional men story. Come on. What we need is to be in alignment with him that our will has become his. Amen. 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 Or should I say his will has become ours. Amen. That, that's my need now. I want to do what he does, what he wants, whether husband or wife goes or not. Amen. I serve God not because me and my wife get along all the time. Amen. And we have a, we have a blessed marriage. But that don't mean that every time everything goes, if something goes south, then I'm going to stop serving God. Amen. I can't come today, Pastor. Why? I don't feel good. <laughs> you 
must grow up. And you don't feel good, so you know what you do? You run out to hear a message from another prophet, from another apostle, another evangelist, because at that moment, you don't feel good. Instead of standing still mm -hmm. and listening to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. And you'll find that yeah. if you stay in the secret place, yeah. Yeah. God will speak to you. Right. Yeah. 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 Get out of the habit of meeting a charm That's right. That's right. to serve God. Amen. His word should be enough. Amen. His word should be enough. This is an hour of awakening. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And only truth can awaken the people. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. There's a harvest outside mm -hmm. that's ready to come in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God has put in every man the ability to be saved. Amen. Did y'all realize that? He has put that ability in every man, woman, boy, girl to be saved. Yes. Amen. He said, because he's given every man the measure yeah. of faith. Amen. Not a measure, Amen. the measure Amen. to be saved. Amen. But he needs laborers Amen. that will communicate the truth of the yes. gospel. Y'all yes. no, please hear me today. I remember when I first came to Blanchard's Grove. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and I remember how I really wept over the people. I really did. Because I saw a people in need of truth. And I fought it because it was so far down here. I fought it. But my heart just overwhelmed me. And I committed back then that I would speak the truth. That my heart's desire was always that not one be left behind. Not one. Now I'm not saying everyone's always come along with what I was trying to communicate because because the sun, it was tough to purge that need for a charm. Mm. Uh, and trying to get them to stand on the word by itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That was tough. And we've had some go. We had some come and go. And my heart always reached out for them because my desire was always to communicate the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I see those that stay with it. And it blesses my soul. And I listen, to have no hard feelings toward those that walked away. That's right. I pray for them. See, when you start growing up in the Lord, you ain't got time for all this. I have no time for hatred of anybody. My prayer is, Lord. That's another one that did yeah. be reaped. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Brother Ernest. <laughs> but that brother there, he... Ernest was a politician. <laughs> he blessed me. I, we can laugh about that now, but he, he blessed me. Ernest would come in real fast. No, on the panel, and now you talk about it. I said, no, we can't be part of this no more, Dick. Not if I'm ever getting to church anyway. Deacon said, I'm still going. I said, okay, dude. I don't know if I called him Deacon, dude, but I said, okay, bro, go ahead. Blanche and grow not cool. And I kept teaching. And I remember when Brother Jordan came to me and said, look at me. You were right, Pastor. Lord have mercy. And I said, see, I didn't ever, I didn't ever mistreat uh, Brother Ernest. I spoke truth to him. And he came to the knowledge himself and said, I'm going to submit to this direction you're going in. Hallelujah. And it's been a blessing ever since. 
And so, beloved, I want you to walk in the truth of God's word. Yes. Yeah, amen. Don't be a Pharisee and Sadducee to where you need a charm. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Something physical, tangible that you got to touch to make you feel holy. Amen. Amen. Stand on the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. That is what's going to sustain you. So that when darkness comes, you can be like Simeon. You can say, Lord, I can now depart in peace. Yeah. Yeah. But the harvest is not your responsibility to plan. He said, man, let's go get it. Amen. That should be our attitude every day. Let's go get it. Let's turn to you darkness to life. From the power of Satan unto God. Amen. Stand to me. Amen. And uh, it, Y'all hear me right now. And this might be some hard to accept. But I am as saved as I'm ever going to be. Amen. The work of Jesus is finished. Amen. I have to come down to a full and accurate knowledge of that. And when you come into a full accurate knowledge of that, you walk in. I throw all my trumps away. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to do the same. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Even when you're not feeling well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when you're not feeling well. Yeah. Strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> Trust the word. I want the Blanchard Grove family to be different. Yeah, yeah. Don't blend in. Yeah. Stick out. Yeah. Yeah. Carry yourself by the word of God. Uh, and you, listen, you'll be torpedoed. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But it'll be because you walked in the integrity of the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I remember Diane. Uh, me. Uh, Diane, <laughs> Diane wanted to have every service in the book. That's <laughs> <laughs> how come we don't have this? How come we don't have that? How come we don't do this? That ain't what God told me to do. Yeah. Amen. I'll, I'll say that jokingly. Right. But we were doing what we know. Amen. Amen. I don't say that in a condemning way. Yeah. Amen. Yes. So, you know, I, I realize that we all had that. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I, there were times when the enemy said, you're going to lose them if you don't have all these services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm speaking yeah. truth to you. That was, that was in the back of my mind. Yeah. And then I said, no, I'm going to teach the word. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to teach the word of God. Mm -hmm. And if only a handful remain, mm -hmm. they're going to have the word in them. Amen. 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 But I was tempted to, to succumb to a lot of things when I know that wasn't what the Spirit was telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, I remember some of the things you asked me. I said, no, Paul. <laughs> I, I, listen, I ran the risk of losing a lot of people. But it was worth it. Amen. Amen. When I hear what comes out of you now, yes. it was worth it. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I think, and I only say that please don't be offended to be sharing that. I share that because I wanted to show how far we have come. Amen. 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 And we can now go out. We got something in us, beloved, that. Uh, don't just think that everybody has it. And I'm not saying we're the only one. 
But just don't think that everybody Amen. has that. Amen. Amen. Cherish it. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank we you. praise you for yes. truth. Yes. And how you are raising us up. Yes. With an artillery. Yes. Full of the word of God. Yes. To dare to be different. To understand that there's a difference in sowing and reaping. Yeah. And you sent us forth as you did the disciples yeah. to reap. Yeah. And may we have a reaping mentality. Yeah. To turn people from darkness to light. Yeah. From the power of Satan unto God. Yeah. To an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Yeah. And we praise you. For, for us hearing this today and all those that will hear the message may they have a mind change yeah. to understand the difference that you've already done the work we have entered into someone else's labor to do the reaping yes, and we thank you for it thank you. in Jesus name Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.